All right, so how we're going to uh, look at this is we're going to apply these two equations. Um, one is the change in internal energy is going to equal the heat plus the work done in a system. Okay, so this is a change in energy. This is the heat added or lost. And this is work done. Okay. The, these are the main two equations that we're going to use. The work then, and Brian, this is kind of what you were asking at the end of the day yesterday. Uh, work, what we're going to do is we know, we, we already talked about yesterday that in a pressure, like let's think about this. Let's think about this fire syringe, yes? Think about this fire syringe. What happened? Right? We, we started in this scenario. We started, this is our volume initial, yes? And we had very low pressure. This is my pressure initial, right? And then what changed? The volume decreased. The volume decreased, right? So the volume went to a very small volume. So this is my volume final. Yes, this is my fire syringe. And what happened then to my pressure? It increased, right? My pressure went up somewhere here. So we have this, you know, here is my initial situation. And here we have my final situation, okay? Um, and this is my pressure final, right? And so what we are going to look at is, you know, the process to get there, you know, this might not be exactly what the graph would look like, okay? But we talked about underneath this graph, Underneath this graph, thanks, Arsene. Right? What is that there? That is the work. No distraction. No okay? That's the work that just took place. Okay? And so, uh, what we're going to measure this work as is negative pressure times the change in volume. Okay? That's how we're going to measure. And these two equations are on our reference sheet. Okay? These two equations are on our reference sheet, so that's how we're going to uh, really, these, these are the bulk of what we, we try to do, okay? So here's what uh, we're going to look at. For the fire syringe, guys, did my internal energy increase? So did my internal energy, yes? Did it increase, decrease, or stay the same? I know. It's going to increase in this case because what happened to the temperature in here? Yeah, it increased. It increased. Right. But the internal energy, right, this is basically measuring temperature. Okay. The change in energy is basically measuring the temperature because what does temperature measure? Yeah, temperature measures the kinetic energy of the particles, yes? And so if my temperature goes up, my internal energy must go up, right? You guys okay with that? So in this case, what happened was uh, in the fire syringe, it's insulated, okay? It's well insulated. It's a very thick acrylic tube. Right? Which does that allow heat to be added or lost very quickly? No. So there's not a lot of heat transfer. Yes? So this Q is basically zero. Yes? The Q is zero. And then what did we do was we did a volume. Now look at this, guys. We did a volume from a big volume to a small volume. Yes? So what is my... For my fire syringe, what is my change in volume? Is it a positive or a negative? It's a negative, yes? 
change in volume. This is volume final minus volume initial. Yes? For my fire syringe, we went small minus big. Yes? Which for my fire syringe is a negative change in volume. Yes? Okay? So look at this. What I, obviously, my pressure is a certain value. We don't know what that was. But look, negative P times negative delta V, what does that make this W? Positive. Okay? And what we know from my fire syringe, so, so here's the thing. For the fire syringe, our change in energy equals Q plus W. Yes? Equals zero plus W. So what does our change in energy equal? It equals W, yes? What does that tell me is going to happen to the internal energy, to the kinetic energy, to the temperature? The temperature is going to go up. Yes? Are we okay with that, guys? Okay. Um, and so... Let's, let's look at a few circumstances with this, um, but th that's kind of how these two main things are related to one another, okay? Uh, the work, so, so when I go from here to here, right? Uh, let, let's just, let's put it all out in writing. It'll, it'll make sense. Let's put it all out in writing. It'll make sense. Okay. Um, here's what we want. Let's think about this scenario. Let's say we have our particles here, right? We have particles here. Let's just go through a few examples of this. We have particles filled with gas, okay? It has a fixed pressure. It has a fixed volume, yes? Everything is fixed, okay? We take it and we submerge it into an ice bath, yes? We take it and submerge it in an ice bath. Ice bath. Okay? What's going to happen? Let's just talk about it. What's going to happen? Right? In terms of in terms of Q and W, what's going to happen? There's going to be heat. Good. Yeah, so heat is lost. To the back. You guys agree with that? Heat is lost to the back. So that's going to make my Q a negative Q. Yes? <laughs> Deal. You okay? Hey. you okay over there? Yeah, I'm good. Is that you making all that noise? Probably. <laughs> all right. Uh, heat is lost to the back. Yes? That's a negative Q. Uh, if, in terms of work, my volume is fixed, right? If my volume is fixed, can there be any work? Just right? If this value doesn't change, is there any work? Yeah, yeah. If this value doesn't change, what's the, if this value doesn't change, the yeah. change in volume yeah. is... Zero. Zero. Yes? So then my work is zero. So in terms of work, that's zero because volume is fixed. Yes? So what does the – I mean, guys, this makes sense, right? But what does the – what happens to my internal energy? It goes down. My internal energy goes down – because temperature goes down, yes? Okay, let's draw, what would a pressure versus volume graph look like for that? What would a pressure versus volume graph look like for that? Volume's constant, yes? So let's just, Right here, let's just do this. This is my initial position. 
Okay, we have some pressure initial. We have some volume initial. Yes. Oh, you said the volume stays constant. Yes. Okay. What do we think happens to the pressure? It's going to go down. So it's just the volume. Pressure finally. <clears throat> So my graph did this. My graph just did that. You okay with this? Brian? Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to see. Are there a relationship between the pressure and the pressure? Absolutely. Due to uh, pressure P, V equals N, R, T. Yes? Okay. I go gas law. Uh, here's the idea. Volume stays constant. N is my number of moles, right? If my volume, if like that stays constant, I don't let any air in or out. R is a constant value. Yes? So as temperature drops, what happens to my pressure? It drops as well, right? As temperature drops, my pressure drops as well, okay? This is something that's called uh, isobaric. No, iso, uh, isochoric, I think, after. Yeah, so, sorry, isochoric, okay? This is a situation where we have a fixed volume, right? We put it in an ice bath, and so my pressure decreases because my temperature goes down, okay? Uh, if we had put it, you guys think about this. If we had put it in a boiling water bath, yes? If we had put it in a hot bath, what would have happened? Q, heat is gained to the gas, yes? That's the positive Q, okay? If it's a fixed volume, then there is zero work. The internal energy goes up because our, essentially it'd just be a flipped graph like this. Everybody okay with that? People at home, how are we doing? Good. <laughs> Thank you. Questions with that. Okay. What exactly does isochoric mean again? Isochoric means uh, the volume doesn't change. Oh. Okay. Isochoric means the volume doesn't change. Now, the other thing that we can do, guys, is look at this. What does temperature equal? Temperature equals P V over N R. Okay. N is the number of moles, right? That should be a constant, essentially, for my system, okay? Unless I'm adding more air in or more air out, that is a constant for my system, okay? R is a constant value, right? So how can I tell that my temperature went down? Because if I took this P naught times V and this P final times V, yes? Guys, this is going to be greater, yes? This is going to be greater. Look, temperature is dependent upon pressure times volume. Okay, divided by this, right? But these are constants, so I don't really care. I'm just comparing the two, okay? Which one is hotter? Well, which one has a greater P times V, right? If it's the same number of moles, it's the same R. P times V is greater here. P times V is smaller here, yes? So that tells me that I just went down in temperature. It tells me my internal energy goes down. Because internal energy measures the kinetic energy. It measures the temperature. Everybody cool with this? Yeah. Questions? I'm not going to do the opposite of this. Obviously, the opposite. You might just write down opposite is a uh, hot water bath. Yes? Hot water bath basically flips everything around. Okay? It would still look a graph like this. Just our final and our initial is opposite. Okay, that's if we put something in a hot water bath. Cool? Okay. 
I apologize again. This is not the exciting type of physics class I like to teach. But welcome to college physics. <laughs> okay. Um, let's do another scenario where oh. Let's, we have pressure and volume, and this time we're going to fix volume, or we're going to fix the pressure, okay? So we have an object that can expand or contract freely, right? So our pressure is going to remain fixed, but we're going to allow this container to expand or contract. Like, think of it as a balloon, okay? Typically, the examples of this are a balloon. Uh, if you take a balloon and you put it in the freezer, what's going to happen to that balloon? Have you guys seen that? Yeah. So the, size, the size decreases, yes? If we take a balloon and we put it in the oven, besides it melting, yes, uh, what's the balloon going to do? It's going to expand, right? You, you maybe have seen that where they take a balloon and put it like in a, a boiling water bath, and that's typically what we do, right? Um, so let's, again, take this idea now, and instead of putting it in a hot bath, we'll put it in a, or excuse me, a cold bath. Let's put it in a hot bath, okay? So a hot bath. Again, the pressure is fixed, and, and here's what that means, right? In a balloon, in a balloon, the pressure, this is, this is, can be confusing to people sometimes, right? In a balloon, uh, a balloon, the pressure on the inside and the pressure on the outside are equal, okay? In a balloon, the pressure on the inside and the pressure on the outside are equal, and that's because if there was a difference of pressure, Right? The balloon would either be contracting or expanding. Right? If they essentially think about pressure as forces pushing in and forces pushing out. Yes? If there's a bigger force pushing in, the balloon's going to move in. If there's a bigger force pushing out, the balloon's going to expand. So what a balloon does is a balloon allows the pressure on the inside to equal the pressure on the outside. Most people would think that the pressure on the inside is bigger, right? But it's not bigger. We've just added more gas. We've added more air. So that's why what's causing it to expand, right? But it maintains pretty much similar air pressure inside and outside. You guys okay with that? For the most part, okay? So let's think about this. Now, we put this object in a hot water bath, right? What's happening to my Q? Yeah, heat is gained. By my gas, yes? What's that going to do? That gives me a positive Q. Okay? It's going to be a positive Q. Uh, now, there's. what do you think is going to happen to the volume? Yeah, good. So in terms of the work then, right, if the volume increases, if the volume increases, what's that going to do to my work? So let, let's do this. An increase in volume equals five, that's final minus initial, right? So that would have been final minus initial. Yes? Final 10 minus 5. Yes? So that is what? That's a positive delta V. Yes? We agree with that. If if my if I have a decreasing volume, that's what? That's a negative delta V. Okay? So if I have an increasing volume, right? If I have an increasing volume, that's negative work. Yes, because it's negative times a positive. Okay? If it's decreasing volume, that's positive work. Okay? Uh, in terms of this, the volume expands. Okay? Volume expands. And so this that gives me a, a negative work. 
Yes? Okay. And then what about this? What about delta U? Now, again, we don't have the specific number, so we can't, we can't really tell. Right? But think about this. We have a positive Q here, and we have a negative work. So what happens to my internal energy? What happens to the temperature of the gas inside the balloon? You have two options here. Yes, what are my two options? I guess you really you can have three options, yes? It could, like if, if this and this are equal, what's true about the temperature? It stays the same, yes? If this is more than this, it heats up. If Q, if I have more energy added by heat than the, is expanded, right, then my gas inside heats up, okay? If this is bigger than this, then it cools down. So this is really dependent. It's now equal, right? This is now equal the idea of, you know, a positive Q plus a negative W. And so this means it could, it could, equal zero or greater than zero or less than zero. Yes? It all depends upon how these are related to one another. If one's bigger than the other. Okay? Let's go with that. Um, Pressure, volume. What's that graph look like? Sorry, bro. <laughs> right, Jesse. Middle down low is not a good spot on the whiteboard. What's my pressure and volume graph look like? This situation. Well, what did we keep constant? We kept pressure constant, yes? So I should have some... Pressure P initial, yes? So I'm going to start here, right? Maybe that's my volume initial, yes? And then expands. So it's going to look like this. Volume final, here's my graph. It's just something that we, that's what we kept constant in this circumstance. So we allowed, we allowed the, um, using the idea of PV equals NRT, as the temperature went up, we allowed the volume to go up. Okay. We, we allowed the volume to increase. Um, and so we tried to keep pressure as constant as possible. Okay. I think, Constant pressure is, I think, the hardest circumstance for us to imagine because it, I, I think conceptually it just doesn't make sense to us sometimes. But it is the ability of like, um, you know, if, if I were to have, I just think of that balloon, right? And we're just allowing that balloon to continue to expand infinitely, right? We're not allowing the pressure to increase. We're just always allowing the volume to increase, which is going to not allow the pressure to go up, right? Like the fire syringe, we increase the pressure, and that's what causes the temperature to go up. Um, essentially, if we had, you know, if we had our syringe just sitting here, and I put this in an ice bath, this 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 piston would slowly go up and up and up and up, right? And so, imagine I'm allowing that to go up, so I'm not allowing it to like I'm not trying to withhold the gas in a certain area or a certain volume. Cool with that? Okay. Um. Notice now, so this is called, this is isobaric, okay? Um, isobaric is the idea that uh, if you've ever looked at a bike pump or something that you use to add air to something, um, bars is a way that you measure pressure. So isobaric, isolate pressure, pressure is constant, right? That's what that stands for, okay? And notice now, there is work that's done, okay? That's the work that's done, yes? In the isochoric, when we had a graph that looked like this, was there any work done? 
because is there any area underneath my curve? No. So from the previous one, you might just write down no work done, right, on that graph because there is no area underneath the curve for the ISO curve. You catching that? Yeah, I, I didn't really get it. Because how could there be no work uh, if our impression stays the same? No, I'm not. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about the previous one we just did. Oh. Okay. The previous one we just did, where we had our, a vertical line. There is no work done on. The, now here's. There's no work done on the gas or by the gas. Okay. Um. When we do work, and, and we'll we'll see that here in just a second. Yes, go with that. Okay. Questions with this, guys? Um, what I could know, and actually, this would be a good example with this. Um, pressure times volume, pressure times volume. Which, which, which one is greater? The one on the right. The one on the right, yes? This is greater. So what that would tell me is that the temperature, that would tell me that the temperature goes up. Because remember, temperature is dependent upon pressure times volume. So that would tell me the temperature goes up if I draw it like this, okay? Which would then tell me that my change in energy increases. And so then it would have to be this scenario. Yes? If the pressure times volume increases, my temperature goes up. My temperature goes up means I have more kinetic energy. More kinetic energy more means I have a greater change in kinetic energy, which means right that this is greater than the work that was done. You guys okay with that? We see how it all kind of blends together. Okay, last one. Um, this is what we we're going to do in the lab. This is our lab example. Um, Okay, so in the lab, here's what we do. We add weights on top, okay? What does that do? That applies some force down, yes? And it moves my piston a certain distance. So now we've just compressed our gas into this smaller area because our piston now is this long. You guys go with that? We've just compressed our gas. Like that. We have applied our force over some distance and we did work. Okay. <clears throat> now, adding to over here, this is work done on the gas. On the gas. Okay. Work done on the gas decreases its volume. All right, work done on the gas decreases its volume, right, which is going to result, <clears throat> excuse me, in an increase in internal energy, okay? That's what we did here. That's what the fire syringe does. We do work on the gas really quickly. We don't allow the heat to dissipate, and we pump up that internal energy very quickly, yes? That's what the fire syringe does, Okay. In the lab, we do it very slowly, all right? And when we do it very slowly, we allow Q to go away. We allow heat to dissipate out of our gas. You guys cool with that? Okay. Um, over here, work done 
by the gas is when our volume increases, right? If our gas is pushing on the environment, right? If it is expanding back, yes? That is decreasing the internal energy. If the work, guys, think about this. When you do work physically, you lose calories inside of you, yes? Remember, work and energy are the same thing. Calories are a measurement of energy, okay? When I do work, I lose energy, yes? When I gain, when I, when I eat, I gain energy, okay? So think about in terms of the gas. When the gas has work done on it, it gains energy, right? Because someone gave it energy through work. When the gas expands and it does work and the gas does its does the work, it loses energy. Yes? Okay. So in our situation, what we are gonna have is we're gonna have Q is a negative. Yes? So Q heat lost um, to environment. So it's a negative Q, okay? In terms of W, work is done on the gas. That's a positive W, yes? Okay, and what we're gonna do, excuse me, is we're gonna keep P times V constant. Right? That means temperature is constant. Okay? If we keep P times V constant, if we do this slow enough so that the energy gained by the work is lost by temperature or by heat leaving the system, yes, then our change in internal energy is zero. Okay? This is the circumstance where the heat lost equals the work that was done because we do it slowly. It's not insulated. It allows heat to go away, right? If we do this, we increase the temperature in here real quick. And then because there's no insulation, if this is a lower temperature on the outside, that temperature is going to try to go out. Yes? Or that heat uh, temperature, that's not a great way to say it. The heat's going to go out. Okay? And so the change in internal energy would be zero. Our graph then, pressure and volume, right, would look like what? We would have a big volume with a low pressure over here, volume initial, pressure initial, okay? And then we decrease the volume. We're also going to increase the pressure. Okay, and we're gonna take something that looks like this. So we're gonna have a pack that looks like this. Pressure final, volume final, okay? And if, so it's gonna look like that. You guys cool with that? Now, PV and PV both equal T, right? They're the same thing, okay? And every position on here, PV, is the same. The, the product of P times V is the same. Okay? This situation is called an isothermal. Okay? Isothermal. What do we keep constant in this case? Temperature is constant. Okay. <clears throat> Questions, guys? It's a lot, I know. It's a lot. 
And we sometimes don't know what questions we have until we actually try it, right? So I understand that. This graph is about this situation. This graph is about this situation. Yeah. This graph is this situation where we've done it slowly, right, to allow the temperature to remain constant, which allows whatever added energy I have from doing work to be lost to the environment, right, in this circumstance. Okay. It's the idea of taking this, right, as I push down, I'm increasing the pressure, decreasing the volume. I am doing work on the gas. When I do work on the gas, I give it more energy. But that energy is lost in the environment around it. Okay? Think about this. What if I pulled up really quickly? What if I expanded that volume really quickly? Yes? What would that allow? That would allow, that's work done by the gas. Yes? The gas is, is it's essentially now going the other way. Okay? Which means it's losing energy. It's losing energy by work, which would make the gas cooler. Right? So, if, like, it's kind of cool. If I do this really fast, I can catch this on fire. If I do this really quickly, I, in theory, could make it ice. Yes? Like, I, I could make it so that it cools enough that it turns into ice. Yes? You get that? If I have it insulated, if I don't allow heat to come in, right? If I allow, if I do it slowly, as I cool it down by expanding it, heat's going to come in because they want to be in thermal equilibrium, right? If it's 80 degrees out here, guess what? It's, it, it wants to be 80 degrees in there, yes? Because there's that thermal equilibrium that it wants to be in, okay? So in theory, if I did this really quickly, I could turn it to ice just like going the other way. I could catch it on fire, which is pretty cool. You guys cool with that? So, and, and what we'll see, um, we're pretty much done, guys, but what we'll see is, in a combustion engine, in a car's engine, it's just the repetition of this over and over and over and over, where we have a compression, we have an expansion, right? And this compression and expansion is your engine doing work, right? And what does your engine do work for? It does work to turn your wheels. And that's literally all the engine is used for, okay? It's just to turn your wheels, right? And make your car go forward. And we, we cause it to, you know, it's this repetition, up and down, up and down, up and down, that we can connect to a shaft that can cause it to spin, right? Um, and it's through this idea of compression and expansion, as well as, you know, adding heat, losing heat by having a spark in there as well, okay? Um, so what I'll do is I'll share that link that I think would be really helpful for you guys. Um, and, and I'll leave, again, we've done um, thermal conductivity in terms of how heat transfers. So we might spend like tomorrow just doing problems with that. And then Thursday and Friday, um, just having you guys work through some simple questions dealing with this idea. Um, and then next Monday, we'll, we'll kind of go through all of that. Okay. I, again, I will post answers. I will post solutions, right? So you'll have both the answers as well as how I work through them. Okay. Um, but I, I might have you guys work through some of the conceptual questions as well, because I think some of those are really good. Because right? the numbers, guys, PV equals NRT. We can do that. The numbers are easy, right? Um, it's just making sure we understand conceptually what's what's actually happening. Um, so, cool?